Hello everyone, welcome to Radiology Case Review Series. In this video, we are going to look at images of a prepubertal female patient who presented to emergency department with right lower abdominal pain. Clinical team was concerned about possible torsion. She was initially referred for ultrasound evaluation. On the ultrasound, we can see normal appearing uterus and the endometrial stripe. As I continue to scroll through the images, we can see the right ovary which appears slightly enlarged with volume of 11 cc. Central stroma of the ovary appears slightly echogenic. On the spectral Doppler evaluation, small amount of arterial flow is seen, but no diastolic flow is identified. No definite venous flow is seen. In contrast, the left ovary appears normal in size. We can see some follicles scattered throughout the left ovary, and we have nice low resistance arterial waveform in the left ovary with sharp upstroke with preserved diastolic flow. Contrast this to the flow in the right ovary where there is small amount of arterial flow which appears to be high resistance without any diastolic flow. Patient subsequently underwent CT examination. On the CT examination, upper abdomen was unremarkable. As I scroll down to the region of pelvis, we can see soft tissue lesion in the right adnexa which appears to be posterior to the uterus and if I window, we can see edematous stroma with peripheralization of the follicles. Contrast this to the left adnexa, where we have normal sized left ovary with few follicles. On the sagittal reformat, we can again see similar findings where we have a large soft tissue mass in the right adnexa, which has central stromal edema with peripheralization of the follicles. Contrast this to the normal sized left ovary with few follicles. Imaging appearances are highly concerning for adnexal torsion. Patient was taken to OR for further management and on the laparoscopy images we can see normal appearing left ovary and the fallopian tube contrasted to the right ovary which is abnormally positioned posterior to the uterus and has bluish tinge. Also, we can see dilated tubular structure adjacent to the right ovary. Imaging appearances are consistent with tubo ovarian torsion. Nice review article published in Radiographics on adnexal torsion. So in terms of teaching points from this article, in the setting of adnexal torsion, the ovary is usually enlarged and can be displaced towards the midline. The uterus can be dragged towards the affected side due to the ligamentous attachments. It is important to remember ovarian enlargement due to benign or malignant lesion is a risk factor for ovarian torsion. Patients typically present with nausea and vomiting. As we saw in our patient, there can be abnormal or reduced ovarian flow. In our patient, the absence of diastolic flow was not prospectively identified, which is why the patient underwent CT examination. The twisting of the pedicle can be demonstrated on ultrasound or MRI examination but can be challenging to visualize on CT. On CT we can see triangular enhancing soft tissue along the anterolateral margin of the uterus between the uterus and involved ovary. I hope you found this case of adnexal torsion interesting and informative. Thanks for your attention.